G'day folks, it's Rob here sitting on a wobbly wheelie bin and welcome to our backyard farm and aquaponics update vlog for the week. Uh, the first section of the clip we're looking at the aquaponics, uh, just a bit of a look at cleaning out some beds, planting in some seedlings, and also cleaning out a very messy um, air compressor cabinet as well. Uh, that's for another clip that you guys will see next weekend, just looking at the backup air system that we run here. I'll give you a bit of a sneak peek of that at the end of the clip, I think. I've done some animation. Um, next, we're looking at, um, yeah, I'll give you a bit of a gander at how we used some Queensland arrowroot root that we harvested. I posted a picture over on our community tab here on YouTube. You can find that community tab by just pressing on our homepage, and then there's a little community section up the top. Click on that, and I post um, photos and links up there if you're interested. And the second part of this clip is actually looking at how I've used the um, Queensland arrowroot or Canaredulus as a mulcher and a composter. It's just one of those extremely versatile uh, plants. It's well renowned in permaculture as a fantastic chop and drop mulcher. It's got an edible root, it's a fodder plant for your chickens, it makes a great border edging to stop grasses and other plants escaping. It's a fantastic uh, landscaping plant as well with its beautiful green foliage when the grasshoppers haven't attacked it. But um, yeah, thought I'd give you a bit of a look at that and also a bit of a lime harvest as well. So I'll stop nattering and let you folks enjoy the clip and I'll catch you at the end. How's it going folks? Just so I'll give you a bit of a look at what I'm up to this afternoon, namely cleaning ants out of my little electrical box for the aquaponics. I want to shoot a clip uh, tomorrow on the backup air system. I had a few people ask after the um, drain fail the other week about what backup I'm running. Had one guy in particular contact me by, via email. Uh, so yeah, it, I had to explain to him it was a mechanical fail with the pump. Therefore the um, compressors down there just kept running. So yeah, I thought I'd just uh, do a little bit of an update and show you what I've done. I actually needed to um, trim back some of these hoses down here. So it was a good excuse to get in there and actually finish a job I've been meaning to do for a while. But for today, today I've been planting out a couple of seedlings. Uh, a couple of um, bok choy over there, a little thyme plant down in there that came with a bonus onion I planted elsewhere. And just down in there we've got a um, rainbow chard. And over in this bed here I popped out the last of a wombok, a couple of rainbow chards and some bok choy up the back. This bed here was actually very mucky. Once I dug down to the water level it was, very, it was chocolate milk brown. So this bed really should be cleaned out I think. but. I'll leave it this time around. Once the one box harvested, I'll um, clean out the gravel and all the clay, sorry, pop it back in. Uh, the mushroom herb will be staying. Well, it's easy enough to propagate. I shoved in a little stick down here. I may have showed you before and it started to throw out some little leaves. And the other one I popped in down here is doing a lot better. But then again, it had larger leaves as well. So it, it propagates easy enough and we do like using it. Some of it will probably come off for tonight's little um, Buddha bowls. Um, over here we have the old basil that's slowly coming back, uh, the wombok, um, pretty much all just all in this bed. I did pop another thyme down in there and uh, bok choy over the back there. And in this jar of water is some Okinawan spinach I've just had surviving on um, town water. I've decided to take pity on it and I pop some aquaponic water in there, see if it'll give it a bit of a boost before I work out where I'm going to put it. Um, things aren't going too well in those barrels over the back, as I may have mentioned the other day. It's just getting too much shade in the afternoon. You can see the sun behind the trees there, maybe. So it really does need to be trimmed back. So the, these beds in particular get a bit of sun in the afternoon. I'm not thinking these guys are going to um, grow as well as the others because of that reason, but we'll just see what happens. I'll just show you this um, end bed over here. I had this outlet clog. Uh, the other day there was a string of algae coming out of it and uh, so all I did was just turn the valve on which is just under the bed there full bore and blew a lot of gunk out of the lines so I think that um, I'm really up for a uh, good flush of the system just unscrew all these hoses because I put it together so every section can be unscrewed and then just run a jet of water through there from the garden hose just to blow out any muck that's in there as a result though, I lost the time that was there. I've already pulled it out. This lavender uh, looks like it's pretty much well gone. I pulled out a load of uh, lettuce from here this morning. Um, it's great to see loads of little compost worms um, hanging around the roots in there. So I know there's a nice colony of them in here. So that was pretty cool. I also cut the um, red celery all the way back, getting ready to pull it out. And yeah, looking at this turmeric, I, I'm not too sure whether I actually want to clear this bed out at the moment mainly because that the, the turmeric's just doing so well. 
There's, there you can probably make out that's the original mother. There's another mother there and another mother forming there. So it's actually put on a, a load of growth this season. I'm contemplating not turning this one into a raft just yet and popping the um, some rainbow chard. I've got a couple left over in here. Uh, down here, found a little gecko egg. So it's good to know that these little fellas are roaming around the um, aquaponics, hopefully eating a few little critters that are doing the wrong thing. Oh, the um, lemongrass too, it didn't um, look too happy after being dry for a day or so either. So, yeah, sort of kicking myself I didn't catch that um, drying out sooner. But there you go, it's one of those things I should have been more vigilant. I thought I'd just give you a bit of a quick look at this arrowroot as well. It's being hammered by these little buggers at the moment. But um, those root sections I harvested yesterday, they ended up in a curry. We found a jar of our, one of our favourite curry sauces in the pantry when we cleaned it up a month or two ago. So I decided to use it up with some goat. Uh, for those that are wondering, the arrowroot, um, it's a nice filler. It doesn't really have much of a flavour. It, when you cut it, it oxidises very quickly. So it's one of those things that, you know, it, it goes best in a curry or a stew because you don't really notice the colour on it. I added it into the um, slow cooker after it had been on high for an hour and then on low for another hour and then just let it sit there for three or four hours. It comes out pretty much all the same shape as it goes in. The consistency though is nice and soft. I added um, in a square of our own ginger and a tin of coconut cream and it came out tasting a little bit coconutty with just a bit of a hint of ginger. It, it's, it takes on flavours, it doesn't really have a flavour of its own. The curry turned out to be a little bit too hot for the girls, so I ended up with a couple of lunches in the freezer out of it. The arrowroot's pretty much all something. We keep forgetting that we've got it at our disposal, and we probably should add it to a lot more stews and um, curries when we make them up, so... I dare say you'll probably see it harvested a bit more often around the patch now for food, not just a chop and drop. So I suppose I should pretty much all leave it there and get back to um, cleaning out this shelf and getting rid of those ants before Bianca comes home and it's time to cook dinner. G'day folks, just thought I'd bring you along and show you a uh, bit of a look at the arrowroot. These guys here are actually supposed to be acting as a bit of a border to stop the uh, buffalo grass um, growing on into the um, underneath the fruit tree bed and it's done a really good job at it. Uh, they make an excellent border plant. I've got one section of tin here that needs to come out but I'll be doing that soon. Um, the arrowroot itself, a lot of it I uh, just um, chopped up with the machete and popped in the base of the compost cage and then I've layered on some other garden scraps. I cleaned up the banana trees in the root pouches as well and I threw them in there and a little bit of leftover hay so a lot of the arrowroot ended up just going on this garden bed here just to um, give it some organic matter. I sprinkled down a little bit of um, chicken fertiliser, the um, slow release organic pellets there as well. Just here's a bay tree that did nothing for a couple of years and then took off out of the blue. And of course we've got the lime tree, and yes I know she's looking sick, I keep giving her um, amendments. It's actually something that happens um, pretty much all every time the fruit are ready to harvest. I've got a few that came off while I was um, just trimming back the um, arrowroot there, so I'm going to do a bit of a harvest in the tick. I actually fed up underneath the um, lime tree while I was here. I added in some of the chicken pellets, some kelp powder and some of the rock dust minerals. Not round uh, around the base of the tree near the trunk because their feeder roots are out further. So just around the back and around the side and down the front here and sprinkled a bit in the arrowroot as well. And then just topped it off with some loose and hay. Uh, it was just easier to put under there than the um, Queensland arrowroot. But yeah, we've got a, a couple of fruit here that are ready to come off. Um, I just give them a bit of a gentle twist. Uh, like this one there is not ready to come off. I dare say this one here would be pretty close. No, it's not quite ready. Oh, this one here will be starting to turn yellow. So my phone's doing funny things by the way today. It's on a Smoothie Pro and it keeps getting the twitches. So sorry for how the phone twitches a bit. But yeah, um, oh, and there we go. I might just have to change cameras. Sorry, folks. Sorry about that, folks. I think I might need to do a bit of a software update on it. We'll charge the battery, but there's a couple of the limes. We've got some more in there to pick as well, so I might um, go and harvest a load of these guys and give you a bit of a look at the end. Oh, and the other thing that we've been picking a few of uh, at the moment are the mulberries. We've got a, a few black ones on there that are ripe. actually spotted a Queensland fruit fly on those ones up there this morning. So I'd say what will happen is these ripe ones, they'll just come off and either be fed to Lizzie or we'll throw them in the freezer. I mean, I've got nothing against eating a little bit of protein here or there, but just the thought of it, I'd rather freeze them and use them in a um, jam or a sauce or something uh, rather than consume little uh, squirmers. So um, anyway, I'll get to um, 
picking some limes and I'll give you a bit of a look at the harvest at the end. I'll just give you a bit of a look here too as well. Uh, the pond was actually very badly sheltered by the Queensland arrowroot there to the point where most of the duckweed had perished. It was just far too shady. Hello little goldfish. Um, you can see a little bit of duckweed around the roots of the taro there so uh, it should um, bounce back nicely. We do have other fish in there. They're going to be a bit hard to see because they're grey. But we've got some firetail gudgeons in there as well. And just a little pond pump just circulating the water and aerating it slightly. But anyway, um, I've got a load of limes in there I need to check. These guys over the pond are a bit of a worry. Sometimes I fear that they might um, fall in and um, might, might affect the, the fish down the bottom there. I'd say that's pretty much all it by the look of it. So there you go folks, there's today's haul of limes. Most of these will end up being juiced and just popped in the freezer. Oh, the juice that is. Uh, we use it a lot in drinks. Um, actually rather fond of a, a little bit of a squeeze of lime and some soda water with some mint and gin. So um, that's where most of this stuff will end up, not in the gin, uh, but in the freezer. I've just started to film the outro for this and on my little mulberry plant here, we just had a visit from Little Miss Queensland Fruit Fly. I don't know if that's focusing in too well. Let me just look in the viewfinder there. But Little Miss Queensland Fruit Fly trying to blow my mulberries. So I did show you a little bit of a clip earlier. Silly lady actually landed on my hand while it was next to a berry. So we'll just dispatch her quickly. But anyway, I do hope that you've enjoyed that little bit of a, um, a roundup. That's a first for me, by the way, um, on uh, what's been going on around the patch here. I'm actually away with Bianca at the moment. We're up at Caloundra um, having a, a couple of days off. So hopefully our house sitters pressed enter and you guys are seeing this on time. Uh, there is another clip coming. I did mention before, I've got a um, clip looking at the backup air system we use for the aquaponics. I had a few people ask after the drain fell off the fish tanker the other day and all the water drained out of the sump tank and the filters so uh, I'll post that one next weekend though I, I want to do a little bit more work on it I, I think I can make it a little bit better and easier for you folks to understand so that's next weekend as well as another bit of a vlog uh, just to let you know as well while we are away if I see anything interesting um, backyard farm or urban farming related I'll post that to our community tab here on YouTube as well so just before I go I do need to say thank you and g'day to all the marvelous folks who are supporting us through patreon Patreon for you folks who aren't quite aware is a subscription service. Some people um, treat it as a donation one, I treat it as a subscription. Uh, my patrons get uh, access to the unedited versions of these clips that you saw tacked together today, plus other clips just for patrons only. Third tier patrons get to hang out with me, um, I'm trying to make it twice a month, but once a month definitely, over on the Zoom app. And we also have super contributors who get to have their businesses linked down in the description of every clip. And you can check them out down below if you're interested. There's a guitar maker, aquaponics store, an IT professional up in Toowoomba, west of Ipswich, and aquaponics startup on Facebook, along with a couple of homesteaders and urban farmers over there as well. So yeah, check them out if you're interested in that sort of stuff. I will pretty much all leave it there and stop rambling on. I'll give you a bit of a quick look at the animation I've done for the backup system. It's not complete, there's more to add to it. And yeah, I'll catch you next clip. Cheers folks, have a top one.